So it's been quite a long time since I actually made some Ashley creation content. I think it's about five months since my last video. Now I have been consistent on the channel, but due to us not having that much info, it being quiet and everyone pumping out the same videos and me kind of just covering the monthly live streams because there wasn't a lot of insane information to cover. And as I always said, I don't just want to follow suit and pump out the same content and it's everyone else. I want to do playthrough, I want to do guild playthroughs, I want to do guides, quests, news, everything. I thought it'd be a good time to take that moment to work on my editing skills, work on this channel, work on my guild, work on Discord bots and other things, and really prepare for the launch of Alpha 2, June Awakening, and kind of get the channel ready for that and get what I'm wanting to do and what I've always talked about doing, and really up the quality of the content that I'm wanting to make. And that's exactly what I'm going to do now, but it's not probably what you think. I'm not going to actually cover the Fighter Arch type video, even though it was one of the best streams I personally believe. I've seen in a long time and it was an amazing stream it was long it was quality gameplay the world was absolutely insane and I genuinely cannot wait for Alpha 2 but being that we're potentially what three to five months out from Alpha 2 I'm actually gonna start a new series that's gonna benefit anyone watching on the channel and also prepare and benefit my guild and get them ready for the ashes of creation Alpha 2 launch now this new series I'm gonna start is called road to Alpha 2 and everything about the Road to Alpha 2 series is about preparing you for testing in Alpha 2, getting the most quality content and the fun out of it, and utilising and being as most efficient as you can during Alpha 2, so you can test, give feedback, have more of an understanding of the systems, and really just push your guild or your playstyle and progression within that time as much as you can, and maximise the time you do have before any potential issues or wipes go on during and alpha 2 whether that's a year or a two year period now if you're running a guild you're getting involved in alpha 2 or you just want to go hard at the game and really help develop and, and give quality feedback this series is pretty much for everyone and anyone and there's going to be benefits for all but without rambling on anymore let's just jump right into the video and get amongst all the content so what is glint well glint's a new bound currency in ashes of creation and it was introduced in the second half of 2023. Glint is a substance that embodies the essence of the beast of Vera, and Glint is going to be replacing hunting a monster certificates. It also comes in several different rarities and the rarities are Dull Glint. Now Dull Glint's classed as common, Dim Glint is classed as uncommon, Glow Glint which is classed as rare, Bright Glint which is classed as heroic and Illustrious Glint which is classed as epic. And finally the rarest to you is Radiant Glint which is the highest to you and that is legendary to you. Now the rarity of Glint dropped increases with the mobs level and difficulty which obviously is going to be based on level or mechanics I would imagine. Glint is going to be stored in the spatial inventory system and that's the tetrasal inventory in Ashes of Creation that people have kind of had some opinions on, some love it, some hate it but all we can really do is accept it and test it and see how it goes. Now when in large quantities it must be transported in crates and Glint can be stored in node warehouses for safe keeping. So how are you going to get Glint? Well, there's two main ways to get Glint in Vera and Ashes of Creation. Glint is dropped from both mobs and players. However, the Glint that you get from lynching players or killing people in the world is different from the Glint you get from farming mobs, but I'll get into that later on in the video. Glint is offered as rewards from doing quests, events, achievements, and obviously PKing or PVPing with people, which is pretty nice. Now, before I fully go into the depths of Glint, what I'll do is I'll talk about the Glint that drops from players. So if you kill someone, it's not just glint, it's actually classed as stolen glint. The amount drop depends on the flagon state upon death, the glint is also not bound. So once you've killed someone and got the stolen glint, you can't actually use it in the normal way. You've got to take it to one of the black market locations where it has to be redeemed for less than its original value. And do bear in mind that glint taken from caravan wreckages will also be classed as stolen glint. So if you're really trying 
get commodities to make more gold and farm glin it's probably going to be the pve way but then it's always good to just gank and kill a load of people because you never know you might kill these people and they might be holding the highest to your glint which would be much less efficient to farm in a pve way and obviously when you raid in the caravan the glint is still going to be classed as stolen but to be fair they'll have rubies and all sorts in the caravan so it's still going to be super useful regardless of hitting a caravan like and defending it's like super purposeful and it totally makes sense it's really going to bring a lot of replayability just in that system alone so what is glint used for well glint's currently being set up as a primary method of making gold in ashes a creation and you may be asking how am i going to do this how do i farm gold how is glint even going to make me gold well that's what i'll get into now and explain how it is going to make you gold and why you really want to focus on glint in alpha 2 beta 1 beta 2 and overall the launch of ashes creation unless things change because obviously it has but this seems like a fairly solid system and i do actually kind of like it but they're probably going to need to expand on this down the line a bit more so if you want to quickly and easy make money you'll just sell your glint to the commodities vendor at a hunt and lodge within a node however if you want to make more money but if you're like okay i don't really want that amount of money i want more i need more money to progress faster so what you'll need to do then is you're still going to need to take your glint to a commodities vendor however rather than trading for gold you will trade it for player commodities you will then transport this to another node where the player commodities can be traded for even more gold than if you just traded the glint for straight up gold however the gold value is based on the demand of the commodity at that node as well as its distance from the original node so you may have to travel several nodes before you get to the desired amount of gold the system's very similar to the pack system in Artridge, where you would run packs and if certain people were trading this certain commodity or this certain pack because pack commodity is similar thing this pack that you would trade would if loads of people in that area would run in that route and trade in that pack and then the value would drop and diminish and you'd find different routes and you'd kind of utilize which was the most effective to get the most money but sometimes that meant heading out overseas using the naval system and then coming back around but you're adding in extra amounts of pvp and extra amounts of potential encounters with pve and we know how intense some of the pve and pvp in Ashley can be so it's risk versus reward is it worth it well actually if you find a nice little route for yourself you could make a fucking killing but at the same time you should also get jumped and done over but you know this is part of the fun and it's part of the exploring and learning what is the best to utilize which i really like so to go back to commodities they are quite similar to trade packs in arch age however at the moment it seems the only way to get them is through farming glint compared to the trade pack system in arch age where you could farm out components on your land or would be a free old in ashes or buy them from the marketplace now commodities can currently only be transported by caravans and merchant ships play commodities can be kept in caravan cities and node warehouses rather than transporting them if you think it's going to be too risky to be moving them and you know someone's going to jump you or you hear some political espionages on the go or something's not right or you see a certain guild and you're like it's maybe not the best to move it now i'll sit on it and i'll do it down the line and then after that and you've weighed it out you can actually transport them and sell them at a later time when there's less risk or you have more of your guild members to back you up or maybe paid mercenaries and then at that point they can be sold directly from the caravan or merchant ship to the commodities vendor hopefully that makes sense but to simplify if you farm a shitload of glint with your players you maybe have a limited amount in your tetris backpack at that point you maybe can't get all types of glint so you're like well do you know what this is a good farming zone with the time it takes to kill the enemies with the debuffs or weapons or stuff we've got we can maybe choose this because people will choose this we can maybe choose this get them in this crater or this little cavern and we can farm up mad amounts of glint then you'll head back and you'll be like do we want quick cash okay there's only a couple of us we can't do the run today we'll quick cash it and we'll get you know quick gold or you'll be like actually maybe there's 12 15 of us do you know what or maybe say 10 because you want to be splitting this so then you just all go you just calculate exactly how much glint you've got you put in equal amounts and all 10 of you head out on a fat stacked armored potentially better bp modified caravan and you head out to go as far as you can with the best route you can find or the sneakiest route and then you maximize how much 
gold you can earn and then if you get that on lockdown you could six seven hour you could just farm it out farm the gold but it's not just like packs on archage packs with any barn and back and forth back and forth no one really could kill you there was nothing whereas caravans each time you do a caravan it's so unfucking predictable so it means that say you have a caravan and you're on your route and you see another caravan and you're like oh we've got like 30 percent of this caravan not filled here do you know what there's only five guys in that caravan and we're on the way over anyways let's kill them let's blow up the caravan let's take their 30 percent off there put it in our caravan and if you don't want to risk it just leave the last of the route and dip out and then you keep going or you could get jumped by people and have to fight for that you might have to hide like just doing these runs that they how exciting it is or you even might be going along and see a rare node spawn and you're like shit man we should maybe get this you farm up that rare node you maybe add that to the caravan or you maybe just get that on yourselves like there's so much content in this very small system within this vast game that has so many systems so yeah if you really want to utilize this system you want to do it as group content you want to do the things i've said in the video and that will maximize how much gold you can get if you maximize how much gold you get that is going to impact your entire playthrough of alpha 2 and the testing phase as well as the launch of the game depending on how much they change of this system but being that they've only just changed it from the last time i don't think this is going to change before alpha 2 and if it does they'll probably just add and implement more on this now what do i actually think about the new tweak system i think it's a much better improvement i actually like it i think it's easy for them to develop on and i think it has an insane amount of potential and when they expand on this the amount of content we could get and the amount of fun we could get it won't just be like boring meaningless farming it's more replayability more group content and even this intertwines into the wagons and why you want to farm to modify them or get better parts for it or get your crafters mech and certain things so it just opens up even more reasons to do other things in the game and replayability from the market when your caravans are blown up and other shit i mean it's really really good so hopefully that's got you up to speed on the glint system how you can efficiently farm gold in Ashley creation alpha 2 or for the launch of the game if nothing changes and you've kind of learned something new and it kind of has prepared you a little bit more for alpha 2 because that's kind of what i want to do with these videos prepare me own guild and just generally give some decent factual knowledge straightforward information on the game and break it down for people as always i really do appreciate you watching these are shit load more content coming to the channel so if you're not subscribed hit subscribe make sure you turn on the notifications and get involved as much as you can in the comment section any questions i'll always get back to you give the video a share drop a like and let me know your thoughts on these systems and how you feel being that we're only three to five months out from ashes of creation alpha 2 and as always i appreciate you watching and i'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.